Hi everyone, Drew Stine Drake Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the old Drake mixtape, So Far Gone. This is the Breakthrough 2009 mixtape from Toronto rap titan Drizzy Drake, who has recently reissued this project over here for its 10 year anniversary. So Far Gone is actually a pretty important informative moment for one of the biggest voices in hip hop right now. And like it or not, Drake has actually changed the face of hip hop pretty significantly. It's also crazy to think just how predictive a lot of the ideas on this tape were. I mean, on the song Bria's Interlude featuring Omarion, the track essentially sounds like a weekend song before there even was such a thing as a weekend song, two years before House of Balloons even came out. There's also the matter of how unorthodox So Far Gone was for its time, how mellow and how sensitive and even occasionally antisocial the tone of this album was. Drake doesn't like the club, Drake doesn't like campus life. It was definitely a new angle for the mainstream. There was also this lyrical fixation on things like romance, as well as gossip, and of course it was all delivered in this slightly sad puppy demeanor. For a 2009 hip-hop album, So Far Gone is so profoundly unmanly, and Drake was incredibly conscious of this at the time. Addressing this very issue on tracks like Best I Ever Had, with lines about how uh, girls will buy his CD when he drops his debut record for the picture, and guys will buy it and claim it's for their little sister. And even though right now Drake is incredibly popular, incredibly successful, he has subverted a lot of the macho stereotypes of the bling era that this tape came out during the tail end of. At the time when this project dropped, Drake's sensitivity was something that he was brutally ridiculed for. And at the time, this ridicule from and rejection by the hip hop community that Drake just so desperately wanted to be a part of, it would paint a lot of the material that he would drop down the road, with Drake showing quite a bit of scorn toward those who weren't so accepting of his new sound and style. And looking back on what was turning heads in 2009 in hip hop, there wasn't really anything out there that was quite like So Far Gone. Raekwon just came out with his Cuban Link sequel, Doom's Born Like This dropped, also Kid Cudi's Man on the Moon 2. Most Def dropped one of his weirdest projects, Fashion's excellent Boy Meets World came out. Lil B was trying to put Cloud Rap on the map with Six Kiss, and uh, Asher Roth was the new great white hip hop hope for frat boys who love to hate college. Of course, some of Drake's biggest influences are still kicking around the time of this tape dropping. Lil Wayne, for one, who was still at a huge peak of relevancy when he decided to endorse Drake, bring him on to Young Money, make multiple appearances on this project. It cannot be emphasized enough just how pivotal Wayne was to Drake's success. You also have Kanye West, who had just dropped 808s and Heartbreak just a year earlier, a record that I'm not sure Drake would even exist without, and instrumental off that album even turns up on this tape, which Drake had to get permission for the inclusion of for this new re-release, which created this big Kanye Twitter meltdown that happened a little while ago. I'm not gonna get into it again. Basically, the point I'm trying to make is that the mellow, chilly fusions of hip hop and R&B presented on So Far Gone, it set the stage for a lot of stuff, and even though it is a very deeply flawed and rough mixtape, the impact of this thing is to the 10th power of any critically acclaimed album that dropped the same year. And because of that, it's kind of interesting to go back 10 years and hear how much Drake has progressed, or maybe not progressed since then. What I ideas was he still perfecting and what kind of risks was he still willing to take because he hadn't fully developed himself yet. What I can say for sure is that the biggest hits off of this tape still sound fantastic today. Best I ever had and successful. Tracks that I think address two pretty key Drake modes. You have a pandering pop rap cut about someone you're so in love with you're basically sucking their toes and the tone lyrically of the track is so general that Basically, anyone can project themselves onto it. And you also have a kind of moody and forlorn rap cut that is about striving for more and aspiring, in such a way where you're inviting the audience to desire more along with you. And these are themes that some of Drake's biggest hits today still boil down to, whether you're talking about tracks like Nice For What, or even Started From The Bottom. And in Drake's defense, he's been right to focus on these ideas and themes more as he has gone deeper into his discography. But not every song off of this mixtape is like this. There are some real ear sores in the track list on this thing that saw Drake testing a lot of concepts that didn't really pan out. Like all of the weird indie crossovers, it's kind of weird to think of a time in mainstream music where rappers might be trying to seek validation by a 
appealing to one of the deadest wings of popular music right now. We have the song Let's Call It Off, which sees Drake essentially just vocally riffing on an instrumentally altered version of Peter, Bjorn, and John's Let's Call It Off. It's kind of like a cover, but it's also kind of not. We also have Drake doing his own thing over an altered version of Santi Gold's Unstoppable, which features one of the worst verses Lil Wayne has ever recorded. It's just completely nonsensical auto-tune garbage. Drake's revision of Licky Lee's Little Bit hasn't aged that badly, but honestly, I'd, I'd much rather listen to the original. In the spirit of one of his biggest influences, Lil Wayne, Drake essentially tries to build his own profile by just doing his own thing vocally over another artist's work. Which conceptually is not a bad thing, it's just that Drake's attempts at this mostly come up empty-handed. His best attempt at styling on another artist's work actually comes through on the track Say What's Real, which sees Drake rapping on like a looped version of Kanye's Say You Will, 808s and Heartbreak instrumental. Which I actually think is a kind of defining piece of inspiration for Drake at this point in his career. Because this is a pretty compelling song that sees Drake locked in the midst of an emotional, internal monologue or like an impassioned confession and Drake has made sure on pretty much every project since this one to put at least one song in this tone on his new records. And I would say he repeats that same formula on tracks like The Calm and Ignant Shit. These are also cuts where Drake delivers some of the smartest and most hilarious wordplay on the entire record and he really shows just how much Little Wayne's lyrical ability greatly influences his pen game. As much as I like these songs, though, there are a lot of other tracks on this record that, to me, just kind of read as mixed results. The song Houston, Atlanta, Vegas just still sounds like a hot mess. The instrumental is a totally blobby junk pile that does not sound appealing at all. Totally stiff groove. And Drake's vocal lines on top of this instrumental do very little to bring this track any sanity or soul. The song November 18th is a somewhat weird and kind of awkward attempt at embracing an old school Houston sound, with Drake dropping numerous bars in this deeply pitched voice where he puts on a southern accent. The song Uptown is just merely okay. I think it could have been better had it not featured yet another predictable little Wayne verse on it on top of it. Bun B delivers this amazingly phoned in verse. You can kind of tell he didn't exactly think this project was going to jumpstart one of the biggest careers and rap, but honestly at the time, who could see that coming? Generally, the mix job on a lot of these tracks and instrumentals is kind of rough, which doesn't exactly reflect all that positively on Noah 40, but you know, at the time, Drake was still leveling up a lot too. As messy as some parts of this tape are, I can't deny that they were doing a lot with a little, and that their ideas made up for a lot of the shortcomings on the execution side of things. Because occasionally on this thing, Drake's delivery does feel pretty unpolished. There are moments on the opening track where he doesn't even sound like himself, or what we know Drake to sound like, mostly because he hadn't quite fully developed that trademark nasally tone that we instantly recognized him for. Drake's singing at this point in his career, while he was not shy about doing it on record, he wasn't exactly at his best vocally, which does not really bode well for a lot of the buttery R&B cuts on this thing. It wouldn't really be until Take Care that I think Drake would come into his own vocally and just start sounding less robotic and more expressive. I know it's easy to say this in hindsight, but there are actually some pretty groundbreaking ideas on this record. But the quality of this tape overall, it's just super inconsistent. For the entirety of his career, Drake has always been about the hits. Typically, the hits that come off his records are pretty great. As long as he keeps that up, there's always going to be demand for Drake. All in all, though, I'm still pretty indifferent toward this tape. I'm not all that crazy about it. I do love a handful of tracks off of it. It is cool to go back and listen to what ideas Drake stuck to and which ones didn't really pan out into anything. Going back to a project like this does feel like you're staring into the petri dish of history and observing the earliest stages of something very significant. I can't really say I get much more out of it than that, though. I'm feeling a decent to strong five on this thing. Tran, Zishin, have you given this tape a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best. You're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Drake, so far gone, forever.